Hi, in this video, we're going to develop step by step a graphics animated program, and along the way, you'll learn about robot basic uh, commands for creating animated graphics programs. I have selected these two images and created them from the famous Da Vinci Man. I dressed him up a little bit to make him less R rated. I've also created this background image, which we will use. Uh, and once we've done that, we can now start writing our animated program. So let's do that. Read bitmap. And we call them JMAN uh, 0. And let's do that. Let's see what happens now. And there you have it. That's the image in Robot Basic. But let's also do the same thing with the background. Read bitmap. And we called it scene zero. And let's see what happens. Okay, there you have it. There's two problems here. The first one is that the sprite, which is this image, we call it a sprite because it's going to be animated on top of a background, is showing its own background. And we don't want to do that. We stop that with a command in Robot Basic called transparent on and what will this do is we'll take let's take it off first uh, we'll take the top left hand corner color as a transparent color and any pixel in the image here with that color will not be drawn so let's see how that works and there you have it there's another problem and that is the background scene that we want fits in the full robot basic screen, but not within our video limitations. So we're going to use a different command here. We'll call it fit bitmap, and we will fit it to the top left hand corner, but within our screen area 640 by 480. Let's have a look at that. That's pretty good except the man needs to be lowered a little bit. So let's do that and lower him to the right a little bit and lower him by 90 pixels. Let's see now. That's pretty good. Okay, now let's do the second image. But let's do a delay between the images. Delay 1000, one second. Let's have a look at that. And, oh, I didn't put one here so and there you are but it's drawing over so what we need is to clear the screen but that's not quite right you'll see in a second and there it is it's raised the entire screen unfortunately though so what we need to do then is here after we draw the background image say save screen and that will save the screen into a buffer we, need, we don't need to keep drawing it every time. And then we say restore screen. It will redraw the screen from that buffer. So let's have a look at that, how that works. And there it is. The man is uh, redrawn over the proper background and the previous image is gone. So then let's um, animate this. And so while, true, and wind, and let's make a bit of indentation. And let's see what happens now. Yeah, you can actually see that something is happening, except this image is not being erased. And that's obvious because we have only erased the, pre the first image. We've drawn the first image and then delayed and erased it. But then we draw the, the second image and then immediately went around and draw the first image again. We need to do the same thing here. Delay and redraw. So let's try that. That's very good. Let's make it a little bit faster. So let's delay only 100 milliseconds. That's pretty good. Except if you look closely, you'll see flickering going on. It's like a bit of latency of the previous image in your eyes. Let's eliminate that. And this command called flip on Let's see what happens when we when we run now. See, there's no drawing going on. And that's because the moment we issue this command, double buffering 
is now happening. Any graphics commands after this command will be drawn on a second background screen. You won't see anything drawn on that screen unless you issue a command called flip by itself like this and that will make any drawn images on the background screen appear on the foreground screen. So, and we do it here and here. We don't do it here. It's because we don't care about seeing this. We draw the background screen and we don't care about seeing it. What we want to see is the background screen with the first sprite. And so that's why we do this flip here. And then we delay, restore the screen, draw the second sprite, and then flip again, and so on. Okay, so let's have a look at that. That's pretty good. There's no flicker. If you, know, if you look closely, there's no flicker at all. Let's make this program a little bit more efficient. And we don't need the, these lines. And instead of zero here, being inside specified, we say plus i. And let's initialize i, i equals zero. So the first time through, i will be zero. It will draw jumping man zero, the first sprite. We'll delay and so on. But now we need to make i equals i plus one mod two. So the first time through will be zero. Come here, it'll be one. Go, draw one. Come here, it'll be two. Two mod two is zero, so it'll be zero again. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And that's pretty good. Now, the man is not quite jumping right. So let's make him jump a little bit better. And if i is 1, it will be 70, 90 minus 20. If i is 0, it will be 90. So it will look like he's jumping up while opening his arms and legs, which is pretty cool. Let's make this program a bit more interactive. So we will do here, get key. So when you press any key, on the keyboard, K will become a number, depending on what key you press. We don't care what it is for now. And when we go here, we say R equals to zero. But if K is not equal to zero, then I equals one. And that's, and we don't need this line. So what that's saying is make I zero, unless you have, uh, if the key is, pre any key is pressed, k is not equal to 0, then make i 1. So it will draw this jumping man 1 if you have a, a key pressed, or it will be drawing jumping man 0. So drawing jumping man 0 all the time, I press the keyboard, and there it is. Now, let's make this a bit more efficient. I've initialized i twice, so let's just remove this up here. And we now don't need this line. Also, we don't really need this not equal to zero. What this means is if k is any number, k, any number other than zero, then i equals to one. But let's also make it here uh, or mouse button as well. So if mouse button is pressed, or any keyboard is pressed, but we also need to read the mouse. Read mouse, mouse X, mouse Y, and mouse mouse button. So we read the keyboard and read the mouse. If you press the keyboard key or you pressed any mouse key, then I is one, otherwise I is zero, okay? So now if I press the mouse, if I press the keyboard, mouse it works it's very good but let's make it a little bit more interesting in that we want them to jump a little bit higher if uh, the mouse is pressed than if the keyboard is pressed so we do this by this if mouse is pre pressed then j equals 1. Let's also initialize j. So j will be 0, and i will be 0. If you press a keyboard or a mouse, then i will be 1. If you press the mouse, j will be 1. So it will be minus 20 
if it's a keyboard, minus 50 if it's a mouse. Let's have a look at that. There it is with the mouse, with the keyboard, mouse, keyboard, mouse. And you could make this an interesting game by having some kind of shooter that shoots at his feet. If I press the, uh, if it's at the lower level and he's standing, it will be shot. If I press the keyboard, it'll miss. But at a higher level, if I press the keyboard, it will not miss. But if I press the mouse, it will miss. And you could make this into an interesting game. And there you have it. Uh, very interesting, even though simple game in 14 lines of code in Robot Basic. And you've learned about Robot Basics, double buffering, and bitmap manipulation, and so on.